Okay guys, back down to Carbon Car Systems today. We are going to show you how to do an upgraded stereo in a Toyota Fortuna. So that's the station wagon sort of version or the SUV version of the Toyota Hilux in Australia. Anything with this type of stereo, we do a plug and play upgrade for and we're going to show you how to pull the dash apart and how to upgrade it. Really, really easy. We're going to retain that factory reverse camera, steerable controls, USB, it's all going to be plug and play. Okay really. guys, you're only going to need a couple of things to remove. The dash is a non-miring pry bar, so please forgive my voice today. I am a little bit sick, but it's a, a non-miring pry bar, so it doesn't scratch the dash, and a 10 mil ratcheting socket set. Okay, you can use a screwdriver if you really had to. Now, first up, up the top here, around these air vents, we're just going to pull these off, and you can simply put your hand inside there and clip them forward. So, you just kind of have to be a little bit gentle. They are already a thin part, and it will actually come off and clip off very, very easily. This is some clips on the side. From there, we're actually going to remove these two side panels, the silver panels. And what you want to do is put your hand down the back end of them and pull forward. And you pull forward and lift them up, and they will actually clip out. Okay, so there's a lot of clips on these, so they can be a little bit tight. So just be aware of that. Just put your hand behind, sort of cradle it at the front so you're not going to snap anything on the dash or scratch anything, and she'll come out very, very easily. From there, you're going to remove the shroud around the actual tablet style, and that simply clips off as well. So just put your hands behind it, and she'll clip off. Again, it's just got a couple of locking clips for that. Very, very easy. From there, you'll actually gain access to all the screws that are behind the stereo. So there is actually four of them. As mentioned, these are a 10 mil bolt, but uh, you can use a screwdriver as well. I suggest using a socket set because it's easier to pull the screws out without dropping them. Whereas if you have a screwdriver, it's not magnetic, you can drop them into the dash, which is a little bit of a pain. So I'm just gonna move those quickly. Now, one of the things to do, as always, if you are removing the stereo, is check you've got no CDs actually in the stereo. So you want to turn the car on, eject them, because once you power it down, you are no longer going to have that ability to get them out. So this one here, there you go. Really, really easy to pull apart, guys. This is one of the easiest upgrades that you'll ever do, and a worthy upgrade. So today we're going to be adding a Kenwood unit. We're going to add a Kenwood DDX 918 widescreen, which is a Toyota unit. They are an awesome unit with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, HD screen. They look flush in the dash, they look amazing. So you've got a couple of different clips on the back here, so we're just gonna have to undo all of them. They've just got little locking tabs on the top of every single one, and I'm gonna show you quickly once I get this out of the way so you can actually see a little bit better. All right, so that's undone. And what you're gonna have here, if you have a look at these, is they just have a locking tab on the top of it. So you can actually push that and pull them out. And it's the same for every single plug. So you've got quite a few plugs there. Okay guys, so when you get this kit from us, we do a complete plug and play kit that is very DIY installation for you guys. We pre-wire them. Okay, it's called an auto chip plug and play kit. Um, we are one of the only stores in Australia that actually make these like this. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you buy it from someone else, you're gonna have to do a lot more wiring. but. We're going to make it really easy for you guys. So what you're going to get in the kit is a fascia panel like this. It's a nice gloss black, so it actually matches parts of your dash. And it looks really nice when it's finished. So this is all gloss black down here. And this unit is a 200 millimeter wide screen unit with rounded edges, okay? And that's actually going to suit this unit specifically. So this is the Kenwood unit I was talking about. This is the DDX918 widescreen, WS for widescreen. And it is perfectly suited to these Toyotas, okay? It's been designed for them. And it has a flip down CD DVD, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a nice flat touch panel, HD screen, which is capacitive touch, so it's really, really fast and easy to use. Now, what you're going to get in the box is a couple of different things. This is one of the main things that we do for you, okay? So we pre lube all this. So we actually make this custom for you guys, and it comes as packages. We've, we've pre made them. Um, and this makes it so easy to install, and I'm going to show you how easy. Literally straight out of the box, this is how it's going to look. And you've got a couple of different things. You've got the antenna adapter, reverse camera, reverse camera adapter, the power and the speakers. Then you also have your steerable controls and you also have a USB to retain that factory USB and then the plug straight into the stereo. So if we're doing that on the car, we're going to get you to come in a bit closer. Have a look how easy this is. All right, so I'm going to show you here. 
there's a couple of different plugs, all the plugs that we undid. Let's go through them. The gray one here is the USB port, okay? So this is actually gonna adapt your factory USB port. So clip that in, that's gonna go into the back of the keyboard, and that will give you Apple CarPlay Android Auto through this bottom location now, all through the factory plugs. Now next up, we have a couple of different plugs here. So this big 28 pin plug here, this is your steering wheel controls, okay? Now, we pre-wired this, so you don't buy, need to buy any other adapters because the keyboard has not built in. And you also have an antenna adapter here. So, little square plug. We then have this 24 pin reverse camera, uh, reverse camera adapter. That will only plug in one way. There we go, very easy to do. Then you have your rear speakers and your front speakers and your powers. And literally, that is virtually your installation. You're gonna plug that into the back of your deck the steering wheel controls, antenna, reverse camera, USB. Very easy to do. There will be one plug left over, that's this one here. This is the factory DAB. Now, this new radio, this particular version of the Kenwood does not have DAB plus radio. It still has digital AM, FM radio, but not DAB plus. Now, that's probably a small sacrifice to make if you're getting a, a widescreen unit, which is actually gonna have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And you can download an app called Tudor, Tudor Radio anyway, which will actually give you DAB radio stations. So it's not something that you really have to worry about. What I'm gonna do quickly is grab this unit out. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna look in the face panel. So let me get this out for you. This will give you a good idea of what it's gonna look like. Excuse me, a bit of a runny nose. These are literally one of my favorite units. I'm actually running this in my own car. Um, and really, they've been bulletproof. So, this is what it's gonna look like. Sitting in the dash like that. That is gonna be custom fitted, looking beautiful. Uh, we've still got some plastic covering on here at the moment, but that's gonna look very, very factory. Uh, cool thing about these, you can even change the boot up screen to show a Toyota logo, should you want to as well. So very easy to do. We're gonna show you how to change the brackets on that real quick. And there's gonna be a couple of little things that you're gonna to have to do as well. We do have to run a new external microphone, which actually comes in the bag. Uh, so this is it here. We're gonna run that up to the center portion here. It's very easy to do. It's gonna take off the A pillar and run it across. You gotta run an extra USB into the glove box. And we do have a GPS antenna receiver right here, which we can actually mount up straight away. This is just for accuracy on your GPS navigation when you're using Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. What we're gonna do here, guys, we're just gonna remove this double-sided tape, and I'm gonna do this quickly while we're already sitting in the car, because it's very easy to do. Very, there's a piece of metal on the inside of the dash, up on the left-hand side here. You can actually just stick it up there, out of the way, and it's not gonna hurt anything. Even under the dash, it's still gonna get reception, because there's clear line of sight to the sky, and then you have your GPS receiver there, done and dusted as well. So literally guys, the only thing we have to do is quickly mount the brackets. We have to run a uh, USB to the glove box. We'll do that while we run the microphone and we are done. Very easy to do. Let's show you the brackets. This is very easy guys. You've got three screws on the side of each, left and right of the passenger driver. You can line them up and you'll notice these screws line up with these screws here. Okay, well we're actually gonna use, I think these two bottom ones and those top ones. So Toyota have used the lower ones, uh, sorry, the higher ones. We're going to use these two here. They will go right here. So very simple to do. Undo them quickly. Here's a hand screwdriver. This is an 8 mil socket if you wanted to use a socket. Put it on here and you'll see all the three line up. Now we've still got some plastic here. We haven't taken off the protective cover yet. Let's move that out of the way. Make sure we're not covering it. And we can use the original screws back in the deck. But even if you drop these... There is some screws in the box with the Kenwood unit that you could use as well. Okay, one side done. Don't need to over tighten. Again, we're gonna pull this plastic back, ready to pull off later. We're just sort of leaving that on there so we don't scratch anything. Right, 
careful, make sure they're straight. They will have a little bit of play in them. There we go. That's straighter. And there we have it, guys. So we'll show you these around your way. So that's how it's actually going to look on the sides. And they'll look even. You can check them, line them up correctly. Very easy to do. But that's ready to go back in the car. So what we'll do, we'll run the microphone now. Make sure we've got all our cables run. Quickly plug it in. We'll be done. Guys, so now we're going to run the microphone. It does not retain the factory microphone. The reasoning is that the new one has gain control, uh, noise cancelling and things like that on the Kenwood unit. So we've tried to adapt them to the factory microphone before, which is up here. It does not work properly. So you do need to run the external mic. It does come from Kenwood in the box. So that's no problems about that. Um, and it looks very, very discreet. It's just a little bit more extra work, but it's not very hard to do. So we're going to show you quickly. Up here, you're going to pull this A pillar off again. No Murray pry bar, he's going to slot it in behind here and it's very easy to sort of push it in there and clip those up. They are very flexible. Uh, the non Murray pry bar, make sure you don't scratch anything. We are going to put those pry bars on our website now because we keep getting requests to do them. Um, this is a 10mm socket here again, it's going to undo the 10mm bolt. Two of them, very easy. goes and she's off okay so you're gonna put that out of the way so don't scratch it now the next bit next thing you're gonna do is pull this pinch weld off this is very easy to pull off it's designed to come off if you watched any of our other videos and you can pull this forward head up and out now you can see here it slots back into the dash it actually slots back in like this into the two little holes that are down this bottom section and then it will clip back in very nice and neatly okay so very easy to pull in and out you can do that okay sit on the dash here we do it with the uh, clips upwards just so we don't scratch anything and then we can run our microphone down this a pillar microphones actually have a little bit of double side tape on them uh, so we're gonna undo that and we're gonna stick it right here line it up in the middle of the car stick it on the windscreen so it looks nice and neat make sure it's straight very easy to do and then up behind your hood lighting, we're going to run it so that you it's not hanging down anywhere. So the easiest way is I find to start on this end and then pull. You hold your hand here and pull it up. And she's in. Okay, so very easy to do. And you can put a bit of double side tape on that if you want to hold it there. A little bit of extra precaution. Um, now you can run it behind the cables here. Very easy to do. Now you can do this two ways. You can tape it up along along these cables here to keep them in line. This one to sort of keep them away. This is the side airbag. Um, you don't want to interfere with that in any way. You're not going to damage it. You can touch it. Just don't cut it. <laughs> okay. Um, the secondary way you can do it if you don't have any tape is to run behind the cables in sort of a looping around them. Uh, just be aware it makes it a little bit harder to remove at a later stage. But uh, see, as you can see there, pulls behind. Nice and neat, even if you don't have any cables or cable ties you could use as well. And there you go guys, that's out of the way. So, the next step here is we're gonna actually pull this glove box out so we can run it across here nice and neat. We are gonna tape it up, loop it up, run the USB into there and virtually plug it in now. So, let's come around this side, I'll show you how to pull the glove box out to make life okay, easier. so on the glove box, these are really easy to get out, but on the left hand side here, or the passenger side, you just got a little clip you wanna get off first. You can just simply pull that off by sort of pinching the center together and clipping it off. It should be fairly easy to do. Oh, let's make it a me. There we go, that clips off. And then you can just pull on it. And she clips off, okay? Basically, it's got two little sections that clip on down the bottom here. If you wanna zoom in there, Hans, it clips back on these. So they just push back in, push it back in when you do the reverse, when you wanna return it back into the dash, you just slide it up nice and neat like this. Very easy to put back in, like that. Okay, sorry, we're a bit far forward here. There we go, clip it like that. And if you were to put it back in, push it on, make sure the section on the left-hand side is out of the way and push it back up and you can clip that back on. That's very easy to return once you've pulled it out. Reason we want to do this, it just basically makes our life easier when we're running cables. So we've run the microphone down the A-pillar now. And if you want to run it behind, out of the way, we're going to tape it up behind here you can run it just inside without pulling everything off just through the inside here 
like this, then you can put all your pinch weld back on. And if you wanted to, you can put your A-pillar back on now, nice and neat as well. We're not going to, because we still have to run some dash cameras on this car. Uh, but I'm quickly going to get the USB because I'm going to tape all this up and show you how to do this as well. But you can see all the cables behind here. If you zoom in hard, you can see all this. See all these cables. What we're going to do, we're going to tape this along along with all those cables so it's out of the way. We're going to tape that up nice and neat. Cut through the center. And we're going to run our USB back that way as well. Okay, so we're going to run the second USB because this cable has dual USB. We're going to run that down the center here as well. We're going to leave that in the glove box. Now, you want to make sure that this is the gray USB, not the black one. And the reason is you want the black one to be in the center here off this factory one, because that will do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, whereas this gray one only does Android Auto. So make the easy accessible one, the one that is easy accessible, which is the black one, okay guys? Now, this is as simple as putting your hand behind the dash and running it into the center there. And that can now sit in the glove box. So that's very, very easy to do. Now you do get a secondary one in the box, you're not going to use that, so just keep that as a spare. And you can tape this up if you wanted to, but we prefer not to tape the USBs at the back because they can have a little bit of length then. But we are going to tape the microphone and run that up the other way as well. So we're going to run that up, back the same way. There you go, up out the center. And we are going to tape this up. So I'll just change sides so you can see this a little bit better. We use tester tape, which is a factory cloth tape. We are going to make this available on our website now too. We get tons of requests for it. Um, we're gonna make it available by the roll because it's typically only available in 16 inch roll or 16 roll lengths. But we're gonna make it available for you by the roll. And the reason you wanna tape this one up is you don't want it being yanked on and you also, like when you put the glove box in and out, so it makes it nice and easy. All right. Make sure it doesn't get caught on anything then. So tape that up, out of the way. And you also don't want to hang it loose because this is a filter here that they can change uh, at later dates when they're doing your servicing. So that's nice and neat guys. Let's run up into the center. And now we literally have everything we need up in the center here, ready to plug into our deck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the glove box back in. We're gonna come across and put the stereo back in, mount it up and check it out and show you how to program the steering wheel controls and make sure everything works. So let's do that. Okay, one last step before we put the actual stereo in, we actually need to move all these clips across to the new one. So you'll see that we don't have any clips on this one. So as simple as putting a little pry bar or a pick behind them, you can lift them up and you can actually just pull them over. But that's the way we found is the easiest way to get these out. They are very flexible, you can't really break them. Just pull them off, clip them off. Now be aware there's two white ones. They are slightly different, and you'll notice on the white ones, if you look at them here, there's a flat side and a, and a, a raised side. So this raised side is the actual top. And you wanna make sure you get them in the right position. It's only these two on the top here. So you'll notice this is a single one down the of these two. Just make sure you put them the right way around. So we're gonna quickly put these off and we'll show you on the new one. Hey guys, so there you go. You can see all the clips have now been put on the new paddling. So it's nice and ready to go. Now we're actually gonna plug all this in and mount it all up. So the first step is we're just gonna take this last little bit of plastic off. Now that we're putting it in the car, it should be nice and easy. There we go. Nice and easy. Right, guys, so we're at to the stage where we're gonna put it in the actual car. Now these can only go to one section on the car, or on the back of the stereo, sorry, but there is a little bit of confusion with the three yellow ones. Just make sure you're only using the one that says rear view camera. So we'll pull it out, there you go there, rear view camera. So you can actually pull that little black cover off. Oh, easiest way, use your teeth. And you can plug it in to the yellow one and then put a bit of tape around it. Now you just wanna be careful you're not gonna scratch anything on the dash because you do have these metal brackets here. So I'm just resting on my leg. Precaution is put some towels over this section if you want to, just to make sure you're not gonna drop it and damage anything. So here's our metal power section going in. You've also got steering wheel remotes here as well. So steering wheel remote goes to remote in. Then we have our microphone. Goes into mic, very straightforward. GPS goes into GPS. 
All right, so now it's going to be a little bit closer. We are going to do the dual USBs here that we have as well. So again, these are color for color now. They are designed that way. Very simple and easy to use. We are actually going to put some tape around these as we always do in our videos, just to make sure if you are pulling on the cables for some extension, they are not going to fall out as you pull on them. So very easy. All right, guys, and that is virtually the whole install. It is so easy. Oh, we do have the antenna. Sorry, quickly don't forget the antenna. Where is she? Oh, there she is. We do have the antenna as well. Quickly plug that one in, and she's good to go. So you just got to feed these in nice and neat. And there you have it, guys. And that is virtually the whole install. We are going to put two bolts in it, and we are going to test the fascia, program the steering wheel controls, make sure everything is working, including the Bluetooth, and then we will finish the bolt up process. So let's check that out right now. All right, guys, so this is the boot up screen. It takes a couple of seconds to boot up only. You can turn off demo mode. You can also go to camera, and you want to turn rear camera interruption on because we do have a rear camera on this vehicle. This is just a warning here that can go off every time. Very easy. Now, let's program the steering wheel controls because this is one of the main things you need to do. You need to go menu, setup, uh, user interface, I believe it is, steering remote controls. Now, it'll take a couple of seconds to come up. And what we're going to do here is we're going to push the button on the steering wheel. So here we're going to push volume up, press it for two seconds. It will come up on the screen and you're just going to map it to the correct button. So here is volume down. We're going to map this to volume down. Now we're going to go through. The next section is track up, track down. So track up, track down. On this one we have mode. So we're going to make that source. And voice recognition. So you can use voice recognition with this system. It does have Siri and the Android partner of that one. So you go right down the very bottom and there is a voice recognition button, which is really, very cool. And then you also have your phone buttons as well. So hang up and answer. All right, there you go, learning complete. And that is actually completed. So we can actually test that out now. So here we go. Oh, we have to go to a radio or a source of music. Here we go, volume up, volume down, track up, yeah. track down. You see radios working. Now we need to test the reverse camera so we can test that out. And there you have it. Now, this has two sets of lines showing because the Kenwood unit has lines in it and also so does the camera. So what we can do here, we need to go to menu and we need to turn off the lines for the camera. Parking guidelines, you can actually turn them off. It's best to use the ones that are actually in the camera itself because they set up for the vehicle. And there you have it. We have the boot open here so it looks like it's high in the roof, but that is the genuine camera working as well. Now, the next step is to test your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Um, so we need to test this by plugging in our phone. We can't do that by filming, but we will test that off screen and we'll try and show you that in just a moment. We've got the microphone up here, of which you want to make a quick phone call, make sure that works as well. Then you can bolt it up, we can clip the panel on, reverse all the other fascia panels, and we are done, put the glove box in. So let's do that. We're going to bolt it up and clip it all in. I'm going to give you one of the greatest tips that I can give you to mounting these the easiest way because when you go to put this in, it's gonna sit a fraction high. So let's just sit this in here, for example. That's the position it's gonna sit in. When we clip this on, it's gonna sit a fraction high like that. So it needs to come down. Now the best way to do this is actually just to bring it forward a little bit, give it a bit of a straighter angle because it'll get a little bit less glare on the screen. And it'll actually sit really nicely. So rather than change all the brackets, because they are located in those factory spots, this is the easiest way to do it. And we'll provide this, um, for you guys in the kit it's just, we're going to use a couple of bolts okay or little spaces so two little spaces about this thick just to lever it forward a little bit on the top two bolts and that will bring it down like this because there is a lot of flex in these they do have a lot of room to be able to do it and it's going to make your life so much easier now the best way to do this so i'm going to pull this out again i'm going to show you the easiest way to do this is to put a little bit of double-sided tape on the bolt themselves okay so this is very very simple to do so what we would do here guys you know put a bit of double-sided tape on the back here and we're just going to cut that off uh, 
okay? And we're gonna use that to stick to the back so it holds it in place when we actually put it on. So here's my secondary screw. Okay, with this one. All right. So once you've done that, you've got a bit of double-sided tape on it. What you're gonna do is peel it. And you're gonna stick it so it's central around the hole up the top here. And you can just guide it on. You can see where it's gonna go. It's not that hard to center it because there is a plenty of room. That's gonna sit it there. And what we're gonna do, we put it in now. You put the screw through that, go, go straight through the center and it's gonna give us that much more gap and push the screen down a little bit. So we find this is just the simplest way to install for this head unit to make it nice and neat, to be able to put this head unit in without having to drill any brackets or anything like that. And it still looks very, very neat, okay? So there you go. You see the bolts are sitting on there. That's gonna give it a bit of leverage forward. There's plenty of flex in these head units. So push them in. All right, the trick here is do the bottom ones first. Because that's going to give you your positioning. There we go. You do that. And you just do it up lightly for now. Once you've done that, then you can do your top ones. And they'll just tear through that double side tape because they are a self threading uh, screw. And they'll do up nicely. There we go, that's that one. Beautiful, okay. And we should have enough flex there. It's about the head unit, nice and neat. Let's try it out. There we go, so we need to do a slight adjustment. It needs to come down a fraction more, as you can see, it's a little bit more gap than there is on the top. So you can see the flex there in the unit. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna loosen them off a little bit, push it down and tighten it while we push it down. And that will sit there perfectly centered and it looks really, really good. Okay, so you just clip this back off. Loosen them off a fraction. Push it down. As you hold it down, you gotta tighten it up. Careful just to push the body of the unit down, not the fascia. You don't want to be smashing the front screen. Okay, they're in nice and tight now. And there you have it, guys. So that's nice and neat. So that's probably a little bit too far now, maybe. Uh, it depends on how you like it, but you can adjust it how you need it. So I can see it's sitting nice and neat around the corners here. And yeah, the next thing you want to test. Just want to make sure the screen flips open nice and neat. So you see that? That looks beautiful at the end. And very, very easy to do. No drilling necessary. And we'll provide that for you so it's nice and easy. Uh, here you go. Make sure you can eject the disc. Oh, beautiful. There you go. Not hitting anything. You can adjust the screen. Get different angles. So if you want to have it back more, you can have it back more. Uh, but personally, I like it sitting straight. But she looks beautiful. So there you have it, guys. That is the easiest way to do the installation on this vehicle. We're just going to clip those side panels on and put that front top bit on. And we're done. Very easy to do. Plug and play. Literally, like, probably a half an hour install. So you might as well do it yourself. Save paying someone. Right, so there you have it. That is the completed result of the Camwood DDX 918WS widescreen unit. Plug and play that will retain everything on this Toyota Fortuna. Nice gloss fascia that comes with it. We've got a DIY video. This is literally a half an hour installation that I reckon anyone out there can do. It has a nice external microphone on this now for nice crystal clear talking. You can adjust the gains and all sorts of things. It's got a HD screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It uses capacitive touch, so it is super, super fast. And Google Maps later this year will have, um, sorry, Apple CarPlay will actually have Google Maps later in the year as well, as well as Waze Navigation, which Android users also do have as well. So this has got a flip down CD, DVD player behind as well. So there you have it looking nice and neat there. Flush out of the dash. And this will also retain the factory reverse camera, the factory USB here, which we actually are using. 
and you also have the factory steering wheel controls. Completely plug and play, but check out the installation video on our YouTube, Carbon Car Systems, and I'm sure you'll love that, guys.